Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Supplier Diversity Spotlight Series. My name is Elise Gamble, and joining us today in celebration of Pride Month is Tammy Wallace of the LGBT Houston Chamber of Commerce. So thank you so much, Tammy, for joining us today. How are you doing? I am doing well, and let me just say what an honor and a privilege it is to be with you. Thank you so much for the invitation. Of course. And so Tammy Wallace is the co-founder and president of the Houston LGBT Chamber, and she's going to share a little bit about what Pride is all about and her organization. And so to dive in, my first question for you would be, how should one respond when experiencing rejection or fear about their sexual orientation or gender identity? And have you ever experienced something like this in your work life or personal life? Yeah, that is, you know, everybody has their own response mechanisms to, to fear um, or rejection. Unfortunately, for so many in the LGBTQ plus community, especially when you talk about, for example, LGBTQ youth, you know, what's attached to that is security, safety. Their uh, LGBTQ youth get kicked out of their homes. They don't have a house, you know, a roof over their head, uh, a place to call home. So it's it's very, very detrimental. And it, and it shapes for us as an LGBTQ community. It just creates trauma in many cases in terms of how we respond to the world, those lived experiences. And so, you know, for me personally, having faced uh, rejection, uh, particularly in uh, whether it's been through my family or the workplace was very, very challenging. And if you're a young person, an LGBTQ youth, and, you know, you're really, really dependent on the resources, whether it's support, you know, from family, et cetera, it can be very, very difficult. I would say though, and I see this with um, our business owners at the chamber, it also makes so many of us stronger. Our entrepreneurs, if you ask a lot of them, why did you start your own business? Many of them will tell you it's because they couldn't be out. They couldn't be who they, you know, authentic in the workplace. And so they said, you know what? I'm going to start my own company so I can be exactly who I want to be and not have to be worried or concerned about that fear of rejection that you mentioned. Absolutely. And so uh, moving forward, we see your pronouns, she, her on the Zoom screen. And so yep. we do have some questions about that, especially how history has explored the use of pronouns and restricted terms like queer over time and which terms are acceptable and appropriate to use. Well, there's there's a, a variety of terms. The LGBTQ plus community is like any community evolving, right? I mean, we see whether it's um, acronyms or uh, you know specific references to you know individual constituencies within a community. We see that changing, and it changes over time. Uh, queer is such a great example. I mean, traditionally, if you talk to a lot of what I'd call our, our more mature LGBTQ members of the community, our seniors, uh, that's a very derogatory term. It goes back to that fear and rejection that you mentioned. It was used in such a derogatory way to create fear, to reject these individuals uh, early in their lives. A younger generation now has said, no, nope, no, nope, we are going to absolutely capture that and identify as queer. Part of that, in some cases, is uh, these individuals don't want to be identified by any specific gender. Right. And queer is just, gen, you know, across the board. Uh, it feels like a term that they can identify with. So that is, you know, that is interesting, but it is certainly much more commonly accepted. We've seen uh, just from a historical perspective, the references of the gay community to the gay and lesbian community to the LGBTQ community, lesbian, bisexual, you know, transgender, um, uh, LGBT, L, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, et cetera. And then it's gone from LGBTQ. And now we certainly see LGBTQ plus to be completely inclusive of the community. And pronouns are as personal as our names the names that we choose in the way that we want to identify and the way that we ascribe ourselves. And so recognizing and honoring the way a person wants to be referred to when it comes to pronouns is critically important to making sure that it's in, that you're inclusive and recognizing the person that's in front of you. And one of the best ways to do that, if you're not sure, is just ask. 
right? You'll see, as you mentioned, and even in my Zoom tag, I have my pronouns because those are my uh, personal pronouns. And so we encourage everyone to not only, whether it's Zoom, whether it's your signature line, make sure you're utilizing your pronouns because that also sends a strong message that, you know, that your company or that you as an individual, that matters. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I was just about to say, it's just as easy as asking that question, what your pronouns are. And so that is an example of being an ally. And do you think you can name a time someone was a true ally during a difficult or challenging time in your life? And how does your organization give back to the community today? Well, I would say, you know, our allies, we would not be where we're at as a community, the LGBTQ plus community without our allies. I often say with the work that we do at at the chamber, we don't go it alone. We were very purposeful and, t- and intentional about including allies, you know, in, in our work because it's critically, critically important. I know for me personally in the workplace, many years ago, I had a senior level manager. And when I say senior level, it wasn't the manager that I reported directly to at the time, very senior level that I worked with on various projects that actually got me to open up in the workplace. Ask me about my ring and and sending signals you know through conversation just wanting i'd love to know more about you and she opened up a door for me it's really why i was able to come out in the workplace because i knew if this senior level manager was asking and she was sharing with me that she was very you know open and welcoming and some of her experiences she was a true ally but she also you know why she did that she saw me struggling in the workplace. She saw me challenged, hiding who I was, not being able to bring my full self, and quite frankly, the pain that's associated with that. So her allyship in the workplace actually triggered not only me coming out, but opened a lot of dialogue in the workplace in terms of welcoming, you know, LGBTQ employees. So I I always reference her back. And, you know, for us as a community, as we're working, you know, with the broader community, supporting the community, you know, our allies, again, are critical to the work that we do. We have tons of our members that serve as LGBTQ allies. And we love the frame that we have at the chamber because, you know, it's business, So we want to do business with each other. And it is, you know, of course, as a diverse chamber, we have an overarching mission of economic inclusion. But at the end of the day, it is also about supporting one another, business opportunities, just like our partnership, our strong corporate partnership with HEB. It is about collaborating and creating opportunity for our businesses, whether allied or LGBTQ. Absolutely. Here at HEB, we try to you know, extend those opportunities, work with our community partners through our supplier diversity programs and really, you know, uplift and empower the community. And so to talk a little bit about your organization, what educational or supportive resources do you offer in regard to LGBTQ plus? Very great question. So we, um, you know, not only that what you might think of with a chamber, just standard networking events, uh, we think of it beyond networking, but true connection It's that intersection of business and community and creating strong connections. But with that, we do our one of our goals is to give our business owners the tools and resources to be successful. So a great example of that is for our certified businesses. And there is that there is the LGBTBE or business enterprise certification. So for those business owners, we have a round table as an example where we help to uh, give them tools and resources to maximize their certification. How do you, you know, work with supplier diversity within uh, companies, right, that are very open and inclusive through their supplier diversity efforts? Um, we have a roundtable where we bring our certified businesses together, not only locally in Houston, but we do this statewide with the Austin uh Austin, North Texas, and the San Antonio LGBT Chambers, we all work together under an umbrella called the Texas LGBTQ Chambers. And then, of course, we have workshops. We've got a great workshop coming up, for example, on truly trying to teach our business owners how to double your sales. So we have all those resources, plus great collaborations with the SBA, with HCC, with the Canon, to name a few. Awesome. Thank you so much. That sounds incredible. It sounds like that's a very good opportunity for some 
pride businesses to get involved and learn more about those analytics. And thank you so much, Tammy, for your time and sharing your story. And thank you again, partners, for joining us on this episode of our Supplier Diversity Spotlight Series. For more information on Supplier Diversity, visit our page on PartnerNet or email supplierdiversity at heb.com. Thank you again, Tammy. Thank you.